Here's a very interesting question that teaches you how important it is to translate things correctly. This must be true has a very solid meaning. You will have to understand that in the context of the problem. Then only will you get the correct answer here. So let's see what this is telling us. The given information is only something about x. That there is this x which is between negative 1 and 1. So I know that x can be anything in this range. It's just some value which is in this range. If this is given, if this is the range in which x lies, then which of these choices must be true. So I can reword it this way that you are looking for the choice which is true for all x in this range, you know, so for all x between negative 1 and 1. So you will look at each choice one by one, see where that choice is true. And if you find out that that choice is indeed true everywhere between negative 1 and 1, then that choice will be the correct choice. But if you find that your choice is false for any value of x in this range, then that will be eliminated. So criteria very clear. This is your correct choice. This is your incorrect choice. It must be true for all x in this range to be the correct choice and if it is false for even one value of x in this range then it will be the incorrect choice so very important to break this down nicely let's just see the first choice first and you'll understand how the analysis will work here we are. So now I'm going to find where all this choice is true. So think about solving this like any inequality. How you'll solve this is get everything on one side, get this inequality. You can take things common here. You can create factors which will turn this into a cubic expression. I have a polynomial, the product of three factors, which is less than zero. And this higher order thing you can solve by going on the wavy line. Your zero points are going to be negative one, zero and one. And you're going to create your wave this way. And now see where is this thing always true? Since I want less than zero, then it's the region where your wave is below the number line, right? So I find that it's below the number line in these two places, which means my first choice is true for x less than negative 1 and for 0 to 1. What I really want to see is whether this choice is true for all x between negative 1 and 1. Is it? No, it's not. Because it's not true for the region between negative 1 and 0. This is where your inequality is actually going to be positive. So for this simple reason, I already had the criteria. This is a statement which is false for this entire range here, not even for a single value. So choice A is not the correct answer. Now, once you've done this for one choice, this analysis is going to be faster for the others. It's easier. Let's go to B and do the same thing. Hit that like button so that other GMAT aspirants can also learn from it. And to stay tuned with such content, hit the subscribe button below. Now, to take your learning to the next level, we have put together a free trial in which you can experience content in all the sections tested on GMAT Focus Edition. For example, you can build your CR pre-thinking skills. You can learn how to approach statistics questions in graphics interpretation as part of DI. You can learn everything about linear inequalities as tested on the GMAT Focus Edition and a lot of other content. The link for this is in the description. Now let's get back to the question at hand. Here you are, yet another equation here. We will again create factors out of this. The zero points are negative one and zero. Create your wave and since you want it to be greater than zero, you're going to take the region where your wave is above the number line then your inequality is true in these two regions that I highlighted in yellow. Is it true every time x is between negative 1 and 1? It is true for 0 and beyond. That means it's going to be true for 0 to 1, but it's not true from negative 1 to 0. That's where it's below the number line, and so it's negative. So here again, I found exactly a place where this is negative. This is false when x is between negative 1 and 0, even including 0. So it's not always true, and therefore even this choice is out. So I'll cross this out, repeat my process for choice C. And here we go. I've already done the part where we create factors. Now think about it. This one here, because it's a square, this is not going to give me zero as a breakpoint. Understand that if it's a square, it's something which is either zero or positive. But had this been zero, my entire product here would also have been zero instead of positive. So one thing I know for sure is that this x thing is not zero and x square is a positive number here. Now if x square is a positive number, then that guarantees one minus x is also positive for the product to remain positive. So from here, I only get that 1 minus x is positive or that x is less than 1. But I'll be wrong if I just write it this much because this is an important constraint I got. So essentially, I find that it is everything which is less than 1 except 0. So this is how I can shade the region. This is where my choice C is true. 
Now, is it true for all x's in my range? Well, it seems like it. It seems to be true even beyond. But there is a problem. No, every value here between negative 1 and 1 also includes 0. But based on this analysis that we just did in the beginning, we already know it's something which is not true for 0. So, it's just this one single value that I found in my range for which the choice is not true. And we knew if it's false for even a single value, that is not the correct choice. And because of this reason, I'll go back here and reject choice C. Finally, we'll do it for D. Either D is the answer or then E is the answer. Let's see. At this point, let me ask you this. Could you have arrived at the approach of solving this question with this level of clarity had you not spent the effort in thoroughly understanding the information presented? And because this skill may not come naturally to many of you, we have created a course architecture that ensures that we teach you this skill through every guided quiz in the EGMAC course and we reinforce the same in every practice quiz. In fact, the way we applied our process skills so comfortably in this question, in the EGMAT course, you will learn how to build these process skills through purpose-built exercises. With each process skill learning activity and practice quiz pair, you will find your confidence increasing. Thus, throughout the Quant course, through over 2,200 questions, you will learn such process skills so that you can also comfortably navigate even the hardest of questions. Let's now get back to the solution at hand. Here we go, it's already in the factored form. Let's just put our zero points and create the wave straight process. Since you want it to be less than zero, you will take all of this region which is below the number line here between negative half and half. So it is true in this range. Now, is it true for all values between negative one and one? Obviously not. Look how negative one and one go beyond this. So it's false for negative one to negative half and also false for half to one. And therefore D is also eliminated, which leaves us only with one choice. That means E is the correct answer. Now, although our answer is here, I'm still going to show E to you just to make you give you that final layer of confidence as well. Here, if you try to factor this, the x squared plus 1 cannot be factored further. In fact, x squared plus 1 is something which is always positive, x squared being non-negative and then you're adding 1 to it. So if it's a product of two numbers, which is negative, and one of them I know is positive, then that guarantees x minus 1 is less than 0, which means from here you get that x is less than 1. Now you think, is x less than 1 always true in this range? It absolutely is. That means if your x is between negative 1 and 1, then it is absolutely always true that x is less than 1. Think about it. In this range, it's impossible for x to be 1 or more than 1. So this definitely is something that is always true in the range you were looking at. Now, let's summarize the question. We began by thoroughly understanding the question, carefully translating what the question was asking of us. There was this one given information which we visualized in the form of a number line. Then we had to look for the one choice which must be true for this range of x. So you were looking for the choice which is true for all x in this range and that helped us be very clear about the fact that if I find a choice to be false for even a single value in this range, then that choice will be wrong. This clarity helped us when we went into analyzing our statements one by one. When we looked at A, it was false for negative 1 to 0, so that got rejected. B was also false for a certain range. C was also false that, and this time it was just for a single value, but it still was false. D was also false for some range within negative 1 to 1. That left us only with choice E, which had to be the correct answer. Had E come before, obviously, we would have landed at the answer before. But this way, you could see the analysis four times, and hence you're now four times stronger. After you do the translation properly, then doing the analysis and staying true to this, always keeping this in front of you, Every single choice that I analyzed, I always kept this criteria in front of me. That ensures that I don't make misses. I don't suddenly start checking things in the reverse way. I have to understand that I am seeing where all this is true, then seeing whether it is indeed true everywhere I want it to be. I'm not interested in seeing where all this is true and just stop there. No, my goal is to see whether everywhere in this range it's true or not. So clarity comes when you set a criteria and then you keep it in front of you. You stick to it.